Mulan, uh, what year was that film done? Ariane, which year? Twenty five years ago. T t about twenty five years ago. It was for the age of fifty of Ariane. She decided to do that dance and I think it was very beautiful to see a woman of 50 years old that would dance in the nude and will have such a duende. Uh, uh, how did you feel yourself when you saw the film and when you create the music? Well, I think that I look at the film first and then do the music or did I look at it once and put the music on there at the same time? But um, what I saw was shadows in light and shapes and the human landscape, the human figure moving through these shadows and a sculpture, like a human sculpture. And um, at that time, I think I was using a double or triple bow technique around that time, 25 years ago. I don't do that so much now. It's where you, you use, hold three bows in one hand and you do things like that. And, uh, and I was also doing kinetic music at the time where you would put a bow through and then spring it and then it would, it would go kinetically and then you do some things on top. And um, it was very spontaneous because I felt the, I, I don't know exactly how many takes you did of the film, but the film seemed to be very spontaneous and in the moment, you know, and reacting to uh, impulses that were happening second to second. And I think we just did w maybe one take of it. Yeah, oh, yes. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was my take, yes. Yeah. yeah. And this is the first time I've seen it since, at least yeah. this little section <laughs> since then. Yeah, yes. But let's just go back a little bit and start with your first impulses and relation with, with music uh, and how it evolved from you listening to music to becoming a visual artist and then putting the two together. Well, there is a little story is that uh, when I was uh, very, very young, I was wake up at night by Sidney Bechet that was playing in the kitchen of my parents when my mother was doing some dinner for him. So the first American artist that I ever met in my life was an, a great Afro-American artist, Sidney Bechet. So that has a, a, um, a, an importance somehow. Uh, but um, later we, I went through the time of uh, May 68 in France, in Paris, and suddenly we discovered those great Afro-Americans that were coming to Paris, like the Art Ensemble of Chicago, uh, and that was really a, a revolution, in, in, in an aesthetic revolution, but a revolution for me. Um, uh, and then, uh, in 1971, it, it is a, a great, great book, uh, Free Jazz Black Power, was published in 1971 by two French guys, uh, Carls and uh, Comoli. And the book is, 40 years later, is translated finally in English, and we can find it here. And the book was... Uh, fascinating for me. Uh, I could see how, feel better, how the Afro-American history and the civil rights 
as such as such shape the aesthetic of that music and um, uh, I really really appreciate that sort of revolt somehow that this music uh, represents the destructuration of in many ways of the sound and reaching a point of uh, what I would call abstraction uh, um, which finally get in touch with my own work because I consider myself uh, as an abstract artist but abstraction with a feeling of, of flesh of sexuality of uh, incarnation so what I really uh, appreciate about the sound, the energy of Afro-American music is that it is really um, an effraction in the pur puritanical world that, the, that the, I discovered in the United States. I did not know before because I was in France. But uh, it, it was a way to breathe, to listen to that music, but not only to listen, but to appreciate the way of life of the musicians. And that's why I was happy to, 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 to meet them. They were um, much more outgoing and appreciative of, of flavor, of taste, of smell, the way I was educated myself in France. Yeah. Something happened, I will just add that, I don't want to be too long, is that in the south of France, when, when I was in my early 20s, um, there, there is a great museum in, in the back of Nice, uh, the city of Nice. The museum is called the Mag Foundation. And the Mag Foundation, as you know, in the early 70s, uh, did uh, some extraordinary show of Alexander Calder, uh, Giacometti, Miro, but also Albert Heller came to play. That's the first time I saw him there, and Cecil Taylor, uh, and, 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 and so many others. And uh, they play also at uh, the music of, of, of Stockhausen. So what was very impressive for Afro-American at that time is that they felt they were treated the equal to Miro, to Giacometti, and, and that really stayed with me. And when I came to New York, uh, uh, my wife, Ariane Lopez, we see, uh, has been crucial to help to do those concerts at White Street. Uh, we did almost 300 concerts in 40 years. Uh, we organized 300 concerts in 40 years. I could uh, add and add. I prefer to say how, how great it is to meet also somebody like you, William, and uh, the beautiful music you do, and the time that you have to generously meet everyone, organize concert, and uh, uh, um, that sort of proteiform talent, it's something I really appreciate. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a flowing of energy that you tap into. And once you tap into this energy, you flow with it and you just do things that are extensions of the, the glowing light that's inside you and that's sort of been woken up and um, creative things begin to happen. Now, when you work... Do you work in silence, or do you listen to music sometimes? No, I, I really work in silence. Yeah. I, I need my full concentration, yeah. and I don't want to be illustrative of music, you know. There you go, yeah. But obviously, I have been protected by that music, and um, the feeling I have of, of creation, sexuality, and spirituality in that music 
is basically my own fundamentals in my sculpture. And um, I think one of the reasons I came here in the United States was because it was the country of John Coltrane and, and Barnett Newman. And the painter Barnett Newman, I remember in 65, at the, at the Guggenheim, did an exhibition called The Station of the Cross. About the same time, John Coltrane released uh, Love Supreme. So the, there is that sort of intense spirituality between Newman and Coltrane that was really a, a, a treat for me to be here. I would suggest that people in the audience who are not familiar with Alon's work is try to find it, uh, do some research, look him up, find out where an exhibition is, and uh, become familiar with his work. When he does a concert at, at White Street, there's always the work around the musicians and on the walls. And um, slowly begin to enter into his world. And you'll find yourself being drawn in and also enlightened by uh, another illuminated person. We always can use more illuminated people in our lives to meet them, to interact with them, to, um, to engage and be inspired by what they do because ultimately that's what the work is about to inspire and uplift people when they you know when people see art that's what it's about uh it's not really about well you know becoming a successful artist i think when you my opinion is when you create a piece of art you're successful <laughs> Because, because you've created something out of nothing, and then you, it's there, so you're successful. All right, can, can we just ask, see if there are any questions from the audience uh, about the film, or just to ask Alan about anything that's been on your mind? Yes. To work, uh, Ariane, uh, can you translate the title? Did you get that? Toak to Alan Carilli. Okay, well, like I said, look Alan up, come to the concerts, look at his website. Uh, there's lots of information about him and uh, begin to uh, enter into his world of uh, creativity. Thank you, William. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Patricia. No, thank you, Alan, and thank, thank you, you, William. And you've been you've been seeing images of his work with different artists throughout the night, and um, that's it, it. Speaks for itself. And there are it's this constant interaction. The way we bring art together is what we're all. <laughs> it's how it should be, if you ask both Alan. I think, yeah. That's, that's how we got together back when we, in the early days of Vision Festival. Yes. That was the point of agreement, yeah? Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's an important point. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's so unique and special in these opportunities that he creates in his home often. Now, it's not a regular base, but often is, is really important. I mean, he's spreading, he's spreading understanding of, of this art form. Anyway, we wanted to acknowledge you. And we, and we just, is just a small, to acknowledge him, we had to have something to give him. So we made a poster. And we're giving you this poster. Oh, wow. And, um, and so here it is. Oh, wow. We're, we're going to actually give you a nicer version that's not in a frame because I don't Thank think you. this frame's up to your... Thank you. Oh. 
Thank you as well.